we're into the next section in 1 Peter. We're just looking at a few verses in chapter 3. And I've called this section, We Are Called. As always, please go and read through the passage a few times and note down um, things that stand out for you. Perhaps jot down questions you might have from the text. I'm going to, as always, highlight a few of the things that have stood out for me in this passage. It's important just to remember that this section is in the whole of 1 Peter. So just remembering where we've come from. We've seen so far some wonderful truths. We are a chosen people. We are a hopeful people, a holy people. We've been called to be a community. Um, we're different from the world around us. Live such good lives among the pagans that though they may accuse you of doing wrong, they will see your good deeds and glorify God. That's our goal. We want God to be glorified through us, so we are missionaries. And then in this passage, we are, are seeing what it means for us to be a called people. And back in uh, chapter 2, verse 21, uh, Peter wrote, To this you were called, because Christ suffered, leaving you an example. So in 2.21, we were called to follow Christ's example. And here, Peter was calling Christians to trace their lives on Jesus' life. And these verses flesh out further what this looks like. As Peter says here, again, the same phrase, to this you were called. And Peter is fleshing out what it means for us to, to follow in Christ's example. He starts with this word here, finally, so far Peter has spoken um, to those in society in general. He's spoken about the way that we submit to those in authority, our relationships in marriage and in the workplace. And then he says, finally, all of you. So he's speaking to all Christians here. We're all in focus. And he says, he, he throws out these five characteristics which are, are like the fingers on a hand. They all flow from this one center. We've been called, and these characteristics should all be things that mark us. We are to be like-minded. So a single-minded focus on our desire to live for God's glory. We're to be sympathetic. Um, this has the idea of feeling what others feel around us, joyfully Celebrating with those who celebrate and grieving deeply with those who grieve. Um, Peter says, love one another. Be compassionate. Uh, this Greek word has the idea of um, a, a deep feeling down to the gut um, that actually moves us to action. So compassionate and sympathetic aren't the same. Sympathetic is feeling deeply, and this is actually being moved to action by what we see around us, and then this call to be humble. Now, these five virtues are not chosen at random. Um, they are all things that should be at work in us together, but remembering we are called to follow Christ's example. And so we are called to be these things because this is what Jesus was like. He had a single-minded focus to bring glory to his Father in heaven. He showed sympathy. He loved in the most extravagant way. Um, he, we're told in the Gospels often that uh, Jesus had compassion on the people and then he always acted um, to fix the problem that was presented. And he was the prime example of humility. We think about Philippians 2, where we see that Jesus, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be used to his own advantage, but he humbled himself, ultimately to death on a cross. So finally, all of you, be these things, because we've been, we are called to follow in Christ's example. And... Christ also showed us the example of not repaying evil with evil. And this word evil comes up a number of times in this passage. And in the next passage, we are going to see how the world around us is going to treat us in ways that are evil. We are going to suffer as a result of living God's way in this world. 
But in this passage, Peter is saying, don't repay evil with evil or insult with insult. On the contrary, repay evil with blessing. We are an incredibly blessed people and we should be a blessing to those around us. We have been blessed to be a blessing. To this you were called. Just as Jesus on the cross, as he was facing the most evil event in history, said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. He blessed them by saving them. And to this you were called. So that ultimately you might inherit a blessing. We are looking ahead to that day when all the evil and suffering of this world will be a thing of the past and we will be in eternity with God. Peter then goes on to quote from Psalm 34. Psalm 34 um, is a backdrop in much of this letter of 1 Peter. Peter was clearly reflecting on the psalm for himself. Verse 8 of the psalm says, Taste and see that the Lord is good. And Peter has already said that we are those who have tasted that the Lord is good. And here he quotes again um, from a few verses in Psalm 34. Psalm 34 as a whole is an expression of thanksgiving to God for his protection and care for those who trust in him. And here he, he wants us to see what it's going to look like for us to follow Christ's example, fleshing out some of what we see in Psalm 34. And he says, whoever would love life and see good days. We should be those who do good. If we want to see good days, we need to keep our tongues from evil, our lips from deceitful speech, so our words matter. We must turn from evil and do good. So this section here is full of imperatives. So this um, keep your tongue from evil is an imperative. That is, it's a verb an action word that is a command. So we are commanded to keep our tongues from evil. They must turn from evil. It's a, another imperative. They must do good. They must seek peace. They must pursue it. These are all imperatives, verbs that are commands. This is what we've been called to. As we follow in Christ's example, we need to watch our words we need to turn from evil and do good, pursuing peace, seeking peace. Just as our Father loves peace and sent Jesus to make peace between God and men, so we, as those who have experienced this peace from God, we need to be those who seek peace with one another. And then Peter gives this uh, motivation at the end for the eyes of the Lord are on the righteous. His ears are attentive to their prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So we should be those who want to live according to our calling because we are those who have been made righteous, knowing that the eyes of the Lord are on us. His ears are listening to our prayer, but the face of the Lord is against those who do evil. So, this is great motivation for us to live this way. Jesus has done everything to make us righteous. He's watching over us. He's attentive to our prayer. So even as we are shown evil by those around us, even as those who we're trying to love don't love us back and we're struggling to be sympathetic and compassionate, we need to be those who pray to our Father in heaven to help us to live lives worthy of the calling that is ours. And we are told that the ears of the Lord are attentive to our prayer. And so in all of this, we are called to live lives worthy of our calling. And we need to get this right within the family that we have been brought into, the church family. Because as we get it right with one another, then it will overflow from us to the world around us. And as we've seen in chapter 2 already, as a result, God gets all the glory. Chapter 2 verse 12 still is the umbrella under which all of this falls. We want to live good lives for God's glory. And this will mean that we are 
all of these characteristics, following in Christ's example for the glory of God. And so as you dig further into this passage and think about areas in your life where you aren't living a life worthy of your calling, pray that God would help you to increasingly be who he has made you to be. And may God glorify himself through us as we live out our calling together. Well, God bless as you dig in further.